Getting the horse to do what we want it to do is accomplished by establishing conditioned responses. Conditioned responses are created by reinforcement. Now there's two kinds of reinforcement. There's positive reinforcement, and that is the horse does something that we like. He does a behavior that we want. We reward that behavior. What kind of rewards? Well, all kinds of rewards we can use for horses. The first is air, because a horse can only live a few minutes without air. So we can use air, that is rest, let the horse rest and get its wind, as a reward for desirable behavior. The second is water. So if the horse is thirsty, we can reward the horse by providing water. Or we can use food rewards if they're used skillfully so that we don't spoil the horse and uh, develop undesirable behaviors. We can also use approval. The horse is a herd animal. It wants the approval of the rest of the group. So if a horse learns that stroking it and an expression like good boy or good girl, once they learn that's a reward, that can serve to reinforce behavior. However, the majority of horse training is accomplished not with positive reinforcement, but with negative reinforcement. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about that. People think as they hear negative reinforcement, we're talking about punishment. Negative reinforcement is a reward, but let me explain how it works. We create discomfort, and that discomfort can be either mental or physical or both. Then when the horse does the desired behavior, we stop immediately. We stop the discomfort. So let me give you an example. We're teaching a young horse to turn. The horse doesn't know what we want. We put pressure on the rein. The horse is uncomfortable. It goes this way, that way, and even increases the pressure by turning the wrong way. And finally, because there's no other solution, it goes the direction we want. If we're a good horse trainer, we instantly reward by stopping the pressure. Now it takes several repetitions, but if the timing is good, most horses learn with three or four repetitions. And they learn when they feel this discomfort, all they have to do is put their head that way and the discomfort disappears. Now, what a lot of people do, because they're not good horse trainers, is they're not satisfied with the response. The horse goes the way they want, but they want more. So they don't reward. These people never get good responses from the horse. You have to reward the slightest try. You have to reward it as soon as possible, within two seconds, or sooner if possible. And then the horse catches on. Then. Once the horse learns every time it feels this slight pressure, it just has to turn this way. Then you can ask for a second step or perhaps a larger degree of turn. And you build upon that in order to get a full response. That's negative reinforcement. It's a reward, not a punishment. And the discomfort that is created is either mental or physical or both and the discomfort is instantly disappears. That's how we get horses to do what we want. And most horse training involves negative reinforcement. Now, when I say we apply pressure, that doesn't mean we inflict pain. It might be a very mild discomfort. We create a little discomfort, and that would be on a halter, or a hackamore, or a bit. But it's uncomfortable for the horse. And he doesn't get relief from that discomfort until the head goes in the direction we want. And then the release is immediate. So one of the great secrets of horse training is immediate relief of pressure. And a common misunderstanding is that the pressure has to be intense. We have to frighten the horse. That's not necessary. Just mild psychological discomfort is all it takes. And a horse very quickly learns that I can get away from this discomfort by simply turning in this direction just a little bit, just a tiny bit. So good trainers don't ask for too much. They ask for a little bit. They reward generously. The horsemen you see in light hands horsemanship have certain qualities. 
One is they're extremely patient. They don't lose their temper and they don't become impatient with the horse because the horse picks up on that because it's so perceptive and that interferes with the horse's responses because horses are distressed by impatience and by anger, they want to run away. So these good trainers are very, very patient. Secondly, these good trainers are exceptionally perceptive. They will see when the horse is making the slightest try, even thinking of making a try, and they will reward the thought. And then they build upon it gradually. The objective in training horses and it's an unattainable objective. It's impossible to get this 100%. But the objective is 100% respect, zero fear. But the common mistake is to say, good, you did what I wanted. Now do it again 10 times more, and then you'll get a rest. Well, the horse is gonna sour on that because the horse doesn't reason, but its response is, I did what he wanted, but I didn't get a reward. So you have to be generous with your rewards for horses and you have to be patient. Wait till the next day, wait for two days and then ask for the same thing. It's gonna work better a couple of days later rather than asking for it two minutes later. I'm not suggesting that you put the horse away and don't ride the horse again for three days, not at all. You simply do something else. But when you're looking for a certain type of highly sophisticated response and you get it, reward the horse by resting and don't ask for it again too soon. In some ways, this is the easiest of all animals to manipulate behavior in, but we have to know how, and it doesn't come to us naturally as a species. We are a predatory species, and it's natural for us to use tools and force rather than patience and persistence. That's what the horse responds best to is patient, persistent signals. Working with horses, if you do it properly, is a character builder. It teaches us patience, it teaches us persistence, it teaches us to be observant, and uh, those qualities make us a better human being. We're gonna not only be better with horses if we learn this, if the horse teaches us these things, we're better with our children, we're better with the people that work for us, we're better with our teachers. We're better with our students. So horses have a profound effect upon human behavior if we work with them properly.